four, topic three is all about how to solve quadratics. To solve a quadratic means to find the x-intercepts of the function. These are sometimes called zeros, roots, or solutions. You already know one way to do this, which is to graph your equation and then look at the x-intercepts. We're also gonna learn three more ways to solve. The zero product property, which is also known as factoring, solving by square roots or completing the square, and finally, the quadratic formula if all else fails. To solve a quadratic by graphing, you simply look at the graph, see where the x-intercepts are. If it's unclear where they are or if they might be decimals, you can always use a table function in a calculator, uh, create a table of values yourself, plug in zero for y to make sure that x comes out correctly. The most solutions that you could possibly have for a quadratic is two. Some quadratic functions hover over the x-axis or below it and they never cross, they have no solutions. Sometimes when you have a perfect square trinomial, you get one solution as shown in the middle. And then sometimes you get two solutions like x equals two and x equals negative two. So we're going to learn the zero product property today and this video is going to go in depth into what that is. Then after that, we will learn solving square roots and solving using the quadratic formula. So to begin and warm up, Think of a pair of numbers that multiplies to make zero. Do you have that pair of numbers in your head? Here are some examples I thought of. 12 times zero, 18 times zero, zero times zero, a thousand times zero. Anything times zero is going to equal zero. So one of those pairs of numbers that you thought of was zero because you need to have something multiplying with zero to make zero. This is the foundation of what's called the zero product property. If two things are multiplied together to make zero, then at least one of those factors has to be zero. As you follow along in this video with Mrs. Dowell, we suggest making a copy of the Google Doc in the description below, which is also a link that was shared by your teacher. You can type into this form as you follow along in a separate window. You could also print it and write on it if you prefer to use paper. In today's video, we're going to learn how to solve a quadratic through factoring. Solving a quadratic simply means to find the value of its x-intercepts. The x-intercepts have a couple different names. You will see them known as roots, zeros, or solutions. One way to find the solutions of a quadratic function is to graph it so that you can see the location of the x-intercepts as shown on the graph on the right. So if we focus on this quadratic right here, you can see that the parabola has an x-intercept of negative 2, 0 and 5, 0. So the solutions of this quadratic would be negative 2 and 5. Last week we focused on the connection between the x-intercepts and factored form of a quadratic. So if we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring, we're simply looking for the x-intercepts. And in order to find those x-intercepts, we need to understand the zero product property. So over here in this box, the zero product property simply states that for all real numbers, a and b, if a times b is going to equal zero, then a has to equal zero or b has to equal zero. So in factored form of a quadratic, a and b are just the factors. So if we focus on this example right here, we notice that x plus three is the first factor and x minus two is the second factor. So if we want to figure out what the x-intercepts or roots or zeros or solutions are, we need to take the first factor of x plus 3 and set it equal to 0. And we need to take the second factor of x minus 2 and set it equal to 0. And then we're going to solve these two little equations. So if we go back to the first factor of x plus 3 equals 0, we know that we would subtract 3 from both sides and we would get a solution of x equals negative 3. For the second, we know that we would take and add 2 to both sides, so x equals 2 would be our second solution. Now if we were to have graphed this particular quadratic, the parabola would have crossed the x-axis at negative 3 
N2. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through a couple examples here um, on how you're gonna see some of these problems and the process for solving through factoring. So the first type of equation that we're gonna deal with is a quadratic equation that is already factored and already set equal to zero. So this is probably gonna be one of the most basic um, examples and types of, of quadratics to solve. So since we already have this equation in factored form, we're gonna use the zero product property and take each factor and set them equal to zero and solve. So I'm gonna take x plus six, I'm gonna set it equal to zero. To solve this, I'm gonna subtract six from both sides and I get x equals negative six to be my first solution. I'm gonna take the second factor and set it equal to zero. I need to subtract 15 from both sides. And then I need to divide by three and I get a second solution of x equals negative five. The second example that we are going to do is not factored. You can see this is not in factored form, it's in standard form but it is already set equal to zero. So anytime we solve, because we're looking to, to find what values make this quadratic equal to zero, it's important that the equation is set equal to zero. So what we need to do first over here is we need to factor it like it says. So we need to figure out what numbers multiply to negative 56 and add to a positive one. Those two numbers would be positive eight and negative seven. So in factored form, we have x plus eight times x minus seven. So now we can go and follow the steps that we did above. We have our quadratic in factored form. So we're gonna take the first factor of x plus eight, set it equal to zero and solve, which means we're gonna subtract eight from both sides, and our first solution is x equals negative eight. We're gonna take the second factor, set it equal to zero, add seven to both sides, and our second solution, or root, as you may wanna call it, is x equals seven. Okay. All right, a couple more examples here. So we're gonna now focus on an example on the second page. This example is not factored and it's not set equal to zero. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that all terms are on one side so that our equation is set equal to zero. So we're gonna take and we're gonna subtract this five from both sides, making our quadratic x squared plus 10x plus 24 equals zero. Okay, so now that it's set equal to zero, we're gonna go ahead and factor it. We need to figure out what two numbers multiply to 24 and add to 10. Some of you may need to list out the factors and that's okay. Um, for this one, we're gonna be working with six and four. So in factored form, we have x plus six times x plus four equals zero. And then we're gonna solve as we did on the other two examples. So we're gonna take the first factor of x plus six and set it equal to zero. We're gonna subtract six from both sides and x equals negative six is our first solution. We're gonna take x plus four, which is the second factor, and set it equal to zero. Subtract four from both sides and x equals negative four, okay? All right, we're gonna go through some of the practice problems down below. Um, number one, you can see that x plus three times x minus four is already in factored form and set equal to zero. So this is like the first example that we did. We're gonna take x plus three, which is the first factor. We're gonna take x minus four, set it equal to zero. For the first factor, I'm gonna subtract three and my first solution is x equals negative three. For the second, I'm gonna add four 
and my second solution is x equals 4. Now for number two, you can see that the equation is not factored and not set equal to zero. So the first thing that we need to do in the second practice problem is subtract 15 from both sides and we get x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals zero. So we need to figure out what two numbers multiply to negative 12 and add to negative four. Those two numbers are negative six and positive two. So in factored form, x minus six times x plus two, and then repeat the solving process by setting each factor equal to zero using the zero product property add six to both sides our first solution is x equals six subtract two from both sides and our next solution is x equals negative two all right two more examples so for number three you're going to notice that this quadratic is not set equal to zero and it's not factored, but it looks a little bit different than number one um, example and the number, I'm sorry, the second example that we did because there's no C value, C equals zero. So there's two ways that you can look at factoring this. You can look at it and say, okay, well, we can figure out if C is zero, what multiplies to zero and adds to two? And that's pretty easy. Those numbers would be two and zero. So we're gonna get something that looks like x plus zero times x plus two, okay? Or you could have looked at that and said, you know what? I'm just gonna take and look at the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor of x squared and two x is x. So you could have just said that this breaks down into x times x plus two but I'm not gonna really focus on that. Some of you may have noticed this is kind of the easiest and most sure route to go. All right, so once we have our factors, we're gonna take our first factor of x plus zero and set it equal to zero, our second factor of x plus two and set it equal to zero. Obviously for the first one, we know that zero plus zero would give us zero. So x equals zero is our first solution. For the second one, we're gonna subtract two and x equals negative two is our second solution, okay? Ooh, one more. So the last one is like the first example that we did already in factored form and already set equal to zero. So we're just gonna take each factor. So the first factor of three x minus two set it equal to zero. We're gonna take the second factor of two x plus four and set it equal to zero. And these give us two little um, mini equations that we need to solve. First, adding two to both sides, then dividing by three. So we get a first solution of two thirds. And for the second factor, we're gonna subtract four from both sides. We're gonna divide by two, and we get x equals negative two for the second. Okay, so I hope this video helps you to understand how to solve by factoring. Um, I need you guys to go ahead now and do the practice by solving by factoring. And then once you're done with that, there's gonna be a second video on solving by taking the square root.